This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave. I've got a special guest today, it's Bastian, who's come all the way from, it's Lyon in France, yeah, isn't it? Lyon, yeah. Welcome Bastian, thank you for joining us. You Very may good. not recognise Bastian, but you may recognise his voice, because he is the voice of Trevor the Tortoise. Je suis la pénombre, je suis la lumière, et maintenant, le monde m'a, moi, Trevor. I am. I am. <laughs> Trevor appeared in a fake movie uh, trailer when we did our Amiga at the Movies show recently. So, um, famous for being Trevor the Tortoise, but also I'm very appreciative to Bastian because he sent the Tom- Thompson MO5E that we used to cover the Thompson computers and their history in a recent video. This is a follow up to that video, the part two, which I promised at the time because I've been waiting for Bastian to visit so that he can uh, <laughs> demonstrate it in in much more detail than I would be able to, in part because a lot of the software is in French. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, most of the uh, most of the games that we're going to be playing, I think you might be able to recognise, you know, a mm-hmm. um, little bit of déjà vu when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to the games. How are we loading games today? Because we've got over here the original MO5 cassette deck, yeah. which is still in its box. We're not needing to use this today. So talk us through what you've got plugged in. So uh, Daniel Coulon, uh, a Thompson and 8-bit computer enthusiast, he's very much into his 8, um, 8-bit French computers, um, like the Alice that mm-hmm. we've got right here. And uh, this, this is so French, a lipstick red computer. I know the Japanese did a few red computers, but you know, the form factor, the size of it, the fact that it's called Alice and it's lipstick red, it's so French. Oh, you, <laughs> you should see the artwork that goes with it. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, a couple of people will probably know Moebius from Heavy Metal. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the artwork for the Alice, if you just look that up, it's, uh, it's absolutely grand. Uh, the MO5V was a complete flop uh, outside of France. Nobody wa- really wanted to buy Thompson computers, mm-hmm. um, apart from the uh, you know the French school system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I believe that they sold probably in the tens of thousands mm-hmm. over the the course of a year and a half, two years that it was on sale for. It's it's not one of the uh, it, it's pretty rare, and this one is. A bit rarer. Oh yes, now let's open it up and you can explain why before we power it on. I'd rather it wasn't powered on while you had your fingers inside. Um, I think we've got it unscrewed so we can just yep. lift it. I'll, I'll yep. let you Li- do it. Lift the, uh, the back of it and we can take a look. I'm guessing this is the, the ROM over here is it? With the, uh, that should be, the, yeah, that should the be window the... covered up where it's been flashed. Yeah, that is, well you, you can see that this obviously uh, reprogrammable uh, EEPROM that wouldn't be in a that wouldn't be in a, a commercial version. This is yes. Now let's explain that because over here we've got this label which says zero 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 six. Yeah. And this word, what does this mean? <laughs> pre-series. Yeah. It's, so that's it's, a pre-series, a prototype. Yeah, prototype. Yeah, so this is actually a prototype board number six. Um, how how on earth did you get hold of a prototype? Um, I mean, it's a rare enough computer as it is to get hold of, but you've got a prototype. I I tried to get in touch with the person who sold it to me via eBay. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were absolutely no information as to whether it was working or whether it was uh, whether it was like a, a full version. I I believe, and it's very possible that this is a person that retired and he's right. like cleaning out their house. And and might have been working for Thompson at one point or another. Mm-hmm. But it turns out that I didn't know that at the time, but I learned uh, much later in life that the uh, the Thompson computers were made in Moulin, like in the middle of France, in the Central Massif, and Moulin was well where I was born. So oh, okay. you know, 
it's uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's pretty funny that those computers were made like miles away from where I lived. Yeah. Um, you both as a came kid. out the same factory. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting, There's, you know, that it's one-sided. You can't see any traces on this side at all. Mm. Um, I don't think we're going to pop it out and look on the other side because I really want to get it fired up uh, and to play on it. But uh, maybe we'll talk about the insets a bit more later. Obviously, these are the RAM chips over here, I think. Yeah, including a couple of them are VRAM as yeah. well. Uh, is this an RF modulator? Yes. But very nicely and quite rarely for the time, we've got SCART built in. It's actually called Peritel. Okay. That's the name of the plug and the standard. SCART is the name of the Société des Constructeurs that actually... Ah, so the acronym is a French yeah. acronym, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was, it's, it's probably one of those uh, very French thing that through technology moving quite fast at the time in, uh, within the European Union, or was it the, the European community at mm -hmm. the time? Yeah, mm -hmm. still. Um, so it was moving quite quickly, and, and I'm guessing that people wanted to standardize as soon as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's enough DIN plugs on there that you know to keep the Germans happy as well. So. <laughs> Good. Uh, Should we pop the lid back on then and see? Yeah, we see what it can do. Yeah, we never refinish really explaining how we're gonna load the games. And yes, yeah. so this one uses one of the joystick ports uh, to to get. To start bit banging the SD card, uh, and it's got a sp special ROM uh, on a, on an expansion card. So it's a two-part thing. Yeah. We've got this in the back here, um, and then we've got the SD card in the joystick. Quite unusual to use a joystick port, isn't it, to load from an SD card? Yeah, um, the Thomson computers were a little bit bizarre in that way that the uh, the joystick ports were also they had dual purpose they were also the mouse ports okay so you could you could plug in a mouse if you've got uh, if mm. you've got one of those again it was much later in uh, in the lifetime of the Thomson computers that the uh, the mouse started replacing the optical pen mm -hmm. and the optical pen is here we've had trouble actually finding any software that we can use on the MO5 with the optical pen with the later models there's quite a bit of software, isn't there? Um, a little bit we'll more, We'll see yes. what's on the SD card. If we can demonstrate the pen, we will. If not, well, it's... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain that we can find a we uh, can. drawing. Like and a... for the purpose of capture... Oh, now we won't be able to. <laughs> for the purpose of capturing, we're going through an OSSC to an HDMI output. We're using a flat screen. Yes, we're using an MO5E on a 24-inch <laughs> flat screen, and we're capturing it through OBS. But of course, optical pen, it needs needs the beam yeah. from a CRT. So I don't think we're going to be able to demonstrate this today, maybe in the future. But uh, just know that a optical pen came with it as standard, as I explained in the documentary in part one. OK, hit the power button then, Bastion. Let's get started. And the games that are on here, are these your personal favourites? Or is this just a mixture that you've thrown on the SD card? Or is this every title available? Because I know there's not many, is there? Um... There are quite a few games. Uh, if you remove the uh, the not so important, uh, you know, educational games, uh, there's probably about 150, 200 oh, more different. More than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's fire something uh, up then. Uh, at the time, it was probably competitive with uh, the Amstrad in terms of the amount mm. of games that you got. Mm. Um, we're going to take a look first, and and then you're going to try to play it because <laughs> I could not figure out. So, uh, so Wisble here in French with RV and B. RV and B. RGB. Uh, this is what you want. Well, I haven't seen um, John Hare or Sensible Software mentioned yet. Oh, this is not moving. Is it not? No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've got moving. Uh, yeah. 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 Now. Um, There's a little bit of colour clash in some places. Was that common, or do you think that's it's just a poor port from something like this here? Um, it might be this particular port. Um, again, different uh, different Thompsons with different uh, different capabilities. I think that the the early models like the M05 and the T07, for example. Uh, add the color clashing kind of mm -hmm. problems. Uh, if you go into the T08 and T09 range, 
then you have access to much more colors, more colors per grid space. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's fire something else up because I'm so terrible at whisper. You have a go on something. Show yeah, me how it's I, I can, I can show, try and show you. Uh, well, I just press reset. Did, did you see? Did you see on the screen? We, you, you can freeze frame it when you. Uh, 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 when this is edited and you know show it take a look just about here mm -hmm. just under the uh, the T yeah you see you see a little yeah, yeah yeah this is actually bits of data from the uh, thine video memory so it's it's a little bit of code that actually tells it to start reading from the RAM rather than okay. the video RAM so this is something that I've seen quite a bit as I was trying to repair this computer. I I sent it to I sent it to you in in working order. It took me a number of weekends to uh, to find what the problem was. Right. And I ended up having to buy a brand new eight bit memory okay. for the uh, like. So what was the, what were the symptoms when when it wasn't working? Did it not get past that stage with the it, little bits it, of? Data it, on the screen. Yeah, that's exactly it. You can see that it flashes different colors uh, at boot up, and it's basically once it gets to the point where the CPU works and the CPU is started, it does a couple of things with the uh, with the ROM, and it copies bits of it to the video RAM to check that the video RAM is usable, mm -hmm. and copies everything to the video RAM and you can see artifacts on the screen because of the way, because of the bits of data they actually yeah. put into the uh, video RAM. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you something that you might recognize. Uh, where is it? Here we go. This is Android. Okay. Uh, made by Infogrames. friends. Yeah. Uh, Infograms, yes. We're gonna play a little game. Does that look like this a game that you've already played? This maybe? reminds me, perhaps, of Load Runner, the little guy running along. Yeah. yeah, is that what it's based on? I think that we can start the game. Ah, here we go. You can, can you see the Android just up there? This, this one here. This yeah. is you. Yeah. No, I'm the I'm the guy at the bottom. Oh, you're I'm the yellow the, guy. Okay. Yeah, I need to. It's now white. <laughs> No, you're yellow. Okay, so yeah, you got to take out the other guy. There we go. And I can dig holes, and I'm trying to remember. Oh, oh. this isn't good. You're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember some of the tricks. Um, we used to play this at lunchtime, uh, yeah. so uh, there was we would eat at the canteen uh, around twelve o'clock at, uh, and we had until one thirty for. Uh, you know, spend spend a little bit of time uh, playing. People would uh, would be playing uh, football into the uh, tarmac <laughs> tarmac covered uh, uh, school ground, yeah. and um, you'd be in the computer room yeah, playing on your Thompson. Yeah. There you go. So tell me more about your computer history then in in France. What was your first computer? My first computer was a, it wasn't my computer, it was my dad's. It was a T0770, so, okay. in so Thompson Thompson. Mm -hmm. in the Thomson range. In the Thomson range, and this is where I learned quite a bit more about programming, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, I made a boo-boo here. What was the first program you fired up on your T07 that you can run? I, so I know what it's called. It was called Panic, and I do not... I haven't been able to find uh, to to find the game again. Oh wow! Okay. Let's see what other games we've got then. So that was that was my first computer. My well, my computer. It was my dad's. Mm -hmm. um, it was set up at home. My dad was uh, my dad was a teacher, so mm -hmm. he was in that very program that you talked about, the uh, Informatique pour tous, and mm. so the the computers for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that obviously affected your life at school because you had Thompsons in, in school. Yeah. Did you have any other brands of computer in school? Was it all Thompson? Um, at that point, I was still at primary school. Mm. So it was it was all Thompson because that's pretty much everything that the uh, the uh, the school could afford. Yeah. In, yeah. The, in the 
it would only take a couple of years before uh, some of them were upgraded. I'll say upgraded in quotes uh, to uh, IBM PCs, mm -hmm. but very early IBM PCs with like Hercules cards, mm -hmm. black and white, couldn't play games, and it was very much yeah. uh, a backward step when it came to gaming. Mm. It would be a couple of years before we got CGA and EGA. And graphics. did you have any first-hand experience of the Nano Rizu, which was, um, excuse my uh, accent, but <laughs> the, the Nano Network that um, was championed with Thompson. So this is where you had a PC centrally, all of the computers, all of the Thompsons laid out, and it would push mm. out a program immediately to all of them. So did you have that in your school? Uh, no, my school, so secondary school, I would have been 12 or 13, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, we had an actual computer room so uh, there would be a, a class of about 20 of us coming in to to that uh to that particular uh room and the teacher would make us start all the uh, all the mo5 so there would be uh, sp special versions of the mo5 the mo5 nr for nano réseau <laughs> uh, and and the because because those machines were made to be booted up from the network, they would just sit there and and wait for data to be sent. Mm. Uh, the teacher would boot up the um, an IBM PC compatible, and he would uh, he would slot in a five and a quarter inch floppy with some piece of software that he wanted to load on every single one of the computers. That he would put it in load it up, it would probably all fit in RAM because it was so absolutely tiny, sure. and then press mm. a button to send it to all the machines and you could check whether you know every single one of the machines were uh, uh, started. Mm. So I remember spending quite a bit of time on the paint program. Mm -hmm. um, with in, the pen? Uh, with oh, the pen, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. So you can imagine... A, 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 I can imagine exactly what the first thing was that you all drew <laughs> in school. <laughs> Yeah, we were 11 or 12, so maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, it, it's pretty visible on a, on a CRT mm. screen. It's not like you could just <laughs> shift the screen <laughs> so that the teacher, teacher could... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's fire up uh, another game while we carry on yeah, talking I, about this. What else have we got there? So I think we might be able to play Le Cinque Max. This is... Uh, it's not going to be as impressive as the uh, TO8 version, mm -hmm. but um, did you know that uh, we are in 2410, we are in New Melbourne in 2410, and the Confederation um, is honoured, retain your candidacy for the mission uh, known under the codename uh, the Fifth Axis. I think Ooh. that I remember most of this. Are we going to get an impos impossible mission elevator action style game? So, um, am I going to be disappointed? Uh, Show me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to get to Planetoid GP three twenty two. Here we go. We've got some graphics. Uh, you, we can define a character and save. Uh, we can use a a gaming fist, a poignée de jeu. When you use a, a stick or a fistful. Oh, know. okay. So, do we want to use the uh, the joystick? Do you want to try hey, or do you want to play with the keyboard? Does that literally translate as a gaming fist? A poignet is a fistful. So, a fistful of what? Of game. <laughs> a fistful of game. Yeah. I guess it it's, 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 it's a really weird... A stick it, of joy, a fist of game. It, <laughs> it's a really weird thing to be saying. Uh, <laughs> Yes, this is uh, impossible yeah. mission style. And you it? can, um, yeah, you, you're going to have to fight and you can jump uh, by pressing up when you're running. Okay. And you might need to do that. The more you, um, your goal, uh, I seem to remember, this is, it's, it's a pretty innovative game at the time and the, uh, um, the way that they've been able to uh, to make it to make things so fluid on a on a computer that wasn't that wasn't quite as powerful as a, you know a, an Apple II fully mm. kitted up, for example. Am I supposed to do something with this lock? Uh, I could have, honestly. I do <laughs> not remember. I think that the goal of uh, those sorts of levels is to uh, gather up. 
Yeah, you, you wouldn't have been able to jump, this is too far. Okay. The goal of the game is to gather up, uh, beat up people, gather up the um, all the uh, the items that you can to uh, to get more points, and once you have enough points, uh, you actually get into a different, uh, different section of the game. Oh, look at that, he does some good, <laughs> some good head banging. <laughs> no, I can't headbutt him, I'm just gonna run away. Uh, you can use the elevator. So this is, this is probably the sort of game that, that that needs a much better introduction. I think we're not doing it justice because... I'm impressed. The... I'm very impressed with the presentation of it, considering the power of the system. Mm. Um, because compared to its contemporaries, the MO5 is underpowered compared to, say, the Amstrad CPC, compared to the Commodore 64, certainly. But, it, you know, this is this is impressive. Well, this is, again, this is the MO version because, as you mentioned, they had the bright idea of making incompatible, in, <laughs> incompatible uh, series and, mm -hmm. and ranges of uh, of computers. Uh, so this is the MO version, which has probably less. Uh, less strict um, uh, demands on on the system mm. it's uh, if you use something like the uh, if you use something like the to line of computers either the game's going to be slightly better like for example we might be able to get some music out of it but, sure sure um okay show me something else then let's okay um, do you think this is the pinnacle of gaming for it is this is this the, 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 those are um the two games that i've shown you uh, android I'm guessing not very many people actually know about mm. and and have played it, but this was one of the tapes that was commonly sent when you bought the uh, when the schools bought the uh, the different packs. Right. Of, uh, so everyone of the... would have played this. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, there, there would be very few games, and that would have been one of them. Mm. Some of those games I mm. do not know. Game you... Over is quite a well-known game. Is it? Yeah, that was a big game. There was a lot of controversy with Game Over because um, the cover art had a quite amply breasted lady with a little bit too much nipple showing, uh, and they put a poster of it in the in the gaming magazine. So all the kids had a Game Over poster on the wall in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I I never actually saw that. Um, I think that in the middle of the nineteen eighties, the most popular magazine in France was called Tilt, mm -hmm. um, and it was all in black and white written um it, it was a very uh very newspapery way of presenting things you mm -hmm. had like five or six columns of text and usually text only and i've made... got let me get the poster i've got the poster I'm gonna... <laughs> of course i've got the poster let me show it to you here we go i found it now imagine having this on your bedroom wall it would have been perfectly acceptable actually as a frenchman to have this on your wall i think but for the English, it was a little bit saucy. Ooh la la! <laughs> no. I should be able to pick these things up. Yeah, I, I think that we still have the same problem with the uh, the joystick. We, we have joystick we, issues. Yeah. You know what we need? Your mate. Should we try Trevor? Uh, we we can we can try Trevor. I'm. I'm not sure whether he actually likes the uh, French computers. Well, being a French tortoise, he, he really should. Let's try. Oh, this will be brilliant if he works. Come on, Trevor. You're home. Yes. Oh, uh, there's, no, there's no fire button. Still. Yeah, there's no fire button still. Oh, no, I've picked it up. It worked. Right. So I don't know what... Uh, you have to collect things and then use them in the right place, don't you? So you, you were on, on top of the cauldron of sort like that big pot there there we go so if i get that and then oh i want that yeah you can only get one i then think use it yeah oh, i wasted it but trevor's working trevor was made to be <laughs> with a thompson <laughs> can we get some trevor voiceover okay, what do you want me to say whatever oh you, just, so. just freestyle it you're trevor what's he saying Ooh. um I, I i can i can read the uh the uh, the text explaining okay. where you are. Vous êtes dans le château avec rien. You are in the castle with nothing. Oh, you've got um, 
I've got like a parchment. I've got a key. I want the key. There we go. And your energy is getting pretty low. You've got about 16%. So I have to sit on the cauldron, don't I, to, yeah. to get my energy? There we go. We can recharge. You let me know what it reminds you of okay. once it's uh, started up. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> he is a yeti. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I don't remember w whether we can play with the... Yeah. Here we go. Oh, okay. So this is a blatant ripoff of Donkey Kong. <laughs> You've got a guy with bananas for arms. I think yeah. that's you. And I love these sprites. And some fruit. Can you, yeah, I can jump. Uh, let's be careful. Yeah. This is fun. I like the colours on this. Yeah, Much I think... more that... interesting than Donkey Kong to look at. The... The color palette on the uh, on the Thompson is is actually pretty good. Mm. Mm. So everyone I've spoken to about Thompson um, in France, when Thompson died, when the machines disappeared, oh, this is complicated. Everyone I've spoken to was not sad. They were just like, yeah, it was going to happen. Better computers were out there. Did you feel bad when Thompson disappeared, or not really? Um. The the thing is that I think Thompson had uh, Thompson had a future, but not as you know. Yeah, sorry, when I say Thompson, I mean the computers because the brand still exists, doesn't it? The brand still exists, but the um, the subsidiary that used to make the the computers mm. uh, uh, shut down, mm. and they were they were in the process of making um, of making PC compatible. Uh, computers and one of them uh, I seem to remember got tested in um, as in early versions <laughs> yeah you need to jump <laughs> early versions of the uh, early versions of the IBM PC compatible got tested in uh, in magazines and it was very well received because mm -hmm. it was good quality hardware with uh, I don't think that you can jump over the goat yeah um, <clears throat> But by that point, even though they produced a good PC, they had a it bad reputation, didn't they? Not so much a bad reputation, but the money ran out. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People were wondering where all the money went. Mm -hmm. Where you know everything that was uh, that got spent into into the endeavor of of trying to get uh, computers into uh, into the schools. Um, at the end of the day. Uh, I think that it didn't reach the kind of people that you wanted to reach mm -hmm. because the um, the students and and uh, and pupils that had access to uh, to computers in the school and actually got interested in them are probably the same ones that ended up having a computer at home as well. And I do not know what I would be doing as a job if it weren't for. If it went for the uh, the Thompson computer getting into my uh, getting into my life, sure. Okay, so you do have a, a, a small debt of gratitude. Um, I mean, we're we're pretty lucky to have an M O five E. It's it's not uh, the best computer uh, to show Thompson games because because the T O line is just so much better, but uh, it means a couple of things. It means we've got QWERTY keyboard. It means we've got joystick ports that are built in. You don't need to buy an extension for mm -hmm. that. The fact that it's got uh, that it's got the joystick ports built into the machine means yeah. that we don't need to use the one extension port at the back. So now we can plug in the uh, the SD drive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've enjoyed seeing games like Yeti um, from nineteen eighty four. Yeti. I love that guy. <laughs> um, thank you for showing me, Bastian. Um, I, I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit about what the Thompson can do. It's not a computer that I'm familiar with, and no doubt many of you have never seen it in action before. So there you go. Now you know this is what the Thompson MO5E can do. Bastian, thank you for joining us. Any last words uh, on the Thompson? Um, it was good while it lasted. If people are interested in, in picking one up, uh, I would guess that the uh, the best thing to do is to load up Daniel Coulon's emulator mm -hmm. at DC Moto, um, try it out, try a couple of games. I think that there are some that are probably uh, 
uh, once you read the manuals are going to be a bit more playable. Sure, uh, sure. Um, we, we, we've done such a bad job at showing... Oh, the, we've the, done the, a great <laughs> job. We've done a great job. <laughs> Any last words from Trevor? Uh, L'épisode d'aujourd'hui est fini. À la prochaine fois. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. Uh, thank you to you for watching. Thank you, Bastian. And au revoir. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video then why not join the official cave dwellers over at Patreon using the link in the description below. Thank you to the names on the screen and all of my patrons for your continued support.